Okay, so far we have the postcard. We have it like this. It's not yet white. It's not centered. It's taking the entire width of the website. So we should start by centering it. We already have a selector for this class, for this postcard. We have the class postcard. So we already have a tool to identify in the entire HTML the element that we want to center. In this case, the class postcard, the div that contains the class postcard assigned. In CSS, you can select in three ways. You can have IDs, classes, or tags. Are these unique? So if I have two divs, let's say that I have another div here, and this one I call it postcard, then I cannot have another one that it's called postcard. I would have to call it postcard two or something like that. My recommendation, ignore divs or ignore ID selectors for CSS. Don't use them because I would encourage you to use to reuse your styles and using IDs is not recommended for that. It will be really hard to reuse or to write less. You know, developers don't like to write. It's called dry, right? Dry like this. So that means don't repeat yourself. And this is something that you can achieve with experience. But if you want to save some time and not do it like me, I did it the opposite way. And it took me years to master it. Don't use IDs and just start using the best practices. And the best practices are just using classes because with classes, you can reuse the same little class name in your CSS. So I could have, for example, if I want to make these two divs yellow, I can just have a class yellow to both. If I do that, the same exact class, then I don't have to. I will save something because here I can just put yellow and I, I make them with the background yellow, right? But if I do it with IDs, let's test it first so that you, well, it's empty the div, right? So I need to, oh, there it is. Okay, I, I forgot the W, my bad. Okay, so if I run this, you'll see both with yellow, right? Let me put in this one goodbye so that you don't, goodbye. Okay, so they both have the class yellow and that's why they both have a background yellow. If I don't do this, if I have IDs, I would have to call this one yellow two, for example. And then I will have to duplicate this, duplicate it with yellow one and yellow two like this, if I want both to be yellow, you know, and I have to change this to pound because it's an ID, right? The ID selector. And that will also work. See, well, actually it's not working because this one, ah, yellow one, my bad. I have to put the number one here. I have to put ID equal yellow one. And then I can, I, I this one is not affecting anything. You, you can delete it if you want. So you have them both in yellow. But if they're going to be both in yellow, then it doesn't make much sense to have yellow one and yellow two. You can just have yellow, delete this. And then you can apply the same class to both. You know, you remove the ID because you don't need it. You remove the ID from this one as well. And then you can have two classes here. One that says postcard and then separated by a space, you put the second class and it's a postcard that is yellow. And then here you say just yellow and that will also work. And it's going to apply to both. It's not working because I need to put a dot here on the CSS. There you go. Because it's a class selector and class selectors have dots. So now I have them both with yellow. And you can imagine if you start having more classes, then you can reuse them a lot between all the selectors and they will end up being very short. Your, your style of CSS is not going to grow that much. And that's what you want. You want to avoid repeating yourself. And the tag selector, it's not very much used, but I think it's not a bad practice to use it and may you may use it. Like for example, I'm using it right now for saying that I want the tag body to have the background black. I didn't put a class here to the body. I didn't put an ID to the body either. So I'm just saying to the tag. If I have, for example, here, let's say I have a P tag and, and I call this car inside, I put car inside. Then I can say all the P tags, I want them to be with the background color orange. So when when you build, you're gonna see the card in orange, but if I have several cars, 
I can just duplicate them like this for example you'll see that all of them will be yellow because all of them are the class the p tag and I said that all the p tags I wanted them with background orange so it's even better than the class for usability but it's maybe it's too much because it's really hard that you find yourself in a situation that you want to apply a style to all the tags it's like too much but it happens it happens sometimes uh, so just have it in your mind but you'll be using classes a lot more than everything else. So right now it's telling us that if we want to center the postcard in the middle, because right now our postcard, let me delete this, go back to the postcard. Here it is. Like we said, our now right now our postcard has, let me remove this. Yeah, our postcard is in, in the middle, but it's taking the entire white screen. It's not in the middle, it's taking everything. So... The first thing we need to do is to, we need to apply a specific width and height to it, and that's CSS. So we can say that dot postcard it's gonna have a width where they're asking us to put the width in uh, 400 pixels, right? So 400 pixels. Then they're also asking us to put the height at 300 pixels. Then they're asking us to put the background in white. And they're asking us to put margin auto. So let's let's build it. And this is what we have now, right? We have a postcard in the middle of the screen. I mean, it's still not in the middle vertically, but it's in the middle horizontally. horizontally. So that's good. Uh, we're going to talk about vertically later because it's a real pain. You'll see. Um, and I'm going to use the inspector to explain a little bit better about the margin. Because I know, I know that margin auto, it's something that came to your mind. If you right click on anywhere and inspect, you will find the HTML on the top. On the right side of the screen, you will find the HTML. And on the bottom right side, you're going to find the CSS. And you can click on this arrow here at the top and you can move around and it will highlight the elements in the HTML. Or you can just click on the actual HTML. So if I click on the postcard here, it's going to show me what CSS styles are being applied to that postcard. So for example, I can remove the height and it's going to be all flat now. I can remove the width, it's going to be 100% width. I can remove the background, it's going to be black, and I can remove the margin, and it's going to be on the left. Why margin auto centers? Because it does. Like, it's by memory. It's one of those tricks that you need to have under the sleeve. Under your sleeve. You need to know that every time you want to center something, margin auto. At least horizontally. We can talk about vertically later, like I said. So margin auto centers because it puts automatic margin on the left and automatic on the right so it will try to fit always in the middle of the screen so if we test now everything is perfect